If you don't know or haven't been keeping up with the current manga that's ongoing, especially it's showing a jump, you need to tap into Sakamoto Days. If, if you already read the series, you already know what's up. It has solid storytelling and a very direct premise in terms of what it's trying to achieve, but the characters and fights really are what draws me in. Sakamoto Days consistently has the best drawn fights in Shonen Jump, and I'd argue some of the best I've ever seen in terms of choreography. Yes, even as a big JJK fan, and that series is going down in my top 10 favorites probably at some point, it's like a 1B to Sakamoto Days 1A. Both are amazing and phenomenal at mapping out a fight from start to finish, but Sakamoto Days has that leg up when it comes to taking simple aspects and turning it into something innovative. Best way to describe Sakamoto Days is like a top quality action movie. Think of something like John Wick, Daredevil, Punisher, the extraction movies, I'd even throw the raid in there at times. Movies that primarily focus around fights centered with weapons and especially guns. The panel panel transitions in Sakamoto Days is second to none and the locations for fights make every fight stand out and feel brand new. There's already been videos that go into depth about what the story of Sakamoto Days is about and why you should get into it, but for me I'm primarily going to be focusing on the fight and proving why it has the best fight choreography in Jump. Heisuke versus Kamiate. Um, hope I say that shit right. The battle of the best snipers in Sakamoto Days. When I say creativity is key in the series, look at this fight because a sniper fight on paper sounds like it would be pretty boring. But no, that was not the case at all. Now you have Heisuke who's like the underdog of the series because he's young and he, he does some stupid shit at times, but he's still learning and has a high ceiling, at least in my opinion. Plus he has a bird he can communicate with. That's like his ability. By the way, there's like no real power system in the series. It's kind of like some characters have like these little kind of like side abilities that don't really carry them, but they help in terms of how they fight. And he's going up against Kamehate, who was a shut-in that doesn't go outside anymore, but, but he works for the Order. And, and just like the name states, they are there to keep order of the assassin world. And just know every member in this is a bad motherfucker. One of the first times we see him sniping. He's shooting four kilometers away, first of all. He shoots the screen Sakamoto was auctioning off on. Side note, I thought it was creative and pretty funny as the muzzle of the gun is acting as the face of Kamehate. I mean, he's shooting clips off of grenades, shooting through the other end of someone else's scope, sniping a throwing knife to change his trajectory back to the enemy and got a headshot. He's a monster. Also, Heisuke was kind of wild I mean, because before he initiated the fight, he said to not only Shin, but Sakamoto, the legend himself, that he's got the best chance to win out of all of them. This fight is all about bullets and confidence. I mean, look at this shit. Kamiyate snipes a crane, knocks the hook off, then snipes and breaks the stop sign to pin the rope of the crane and it knocks Heisuke back. He's doing ricochet shots off of a tire spoke. One of the coldest lines in the manga for me is Sakamoto saying, Kamiyate can control an entire area with one bullet. And I said bullets and confidence define this fight. Not only for Kamiyate, but for Heisuke. Because Heisuke was trying to build his confidence up after the crazy shit he just experienced with Hio. He also has to thank Sakamoto for giving him that vest because he was using his body to take bullets just to find Kamehate. And then once he found him, he was able to trace the trajectory of his bullet and almost get a shot off. I thought Heisuke was pretty cool, but not someone I would rate highly. But after this fight, the stocks could go through the roof for him, depending on how far Suzuki wants to go with him. They also had this panel and moment that was something straight out of a movie. A train passes between them and they shoot their bullets through the windows. One connected, the other didn't. But Heisuke also had this last minute deception that he tried to pull on Kamiyate, which was pretty clutch even though it didn't work out. It was still a really cool fight. It lasted about three to four chapters. And it's one of the more recent fights in the manga. Up next, we got Osaragi versus Mafuyu. Now, Mafuyu is a character that some people either love or hate is one I'm getting. I just think he looks cool and his versatility and movement is dope. But Osaragi on the hand, everybody loves her. She's not the strongest on the order, but whenever I see her, I just know someone is going to die. I mean, just look at her eyes. Does this look like a chick you want to play around with? Now, Osaragi blocked this kick and was about to chop off his foot to remove the blade, but Mafuyu slipped out of his shoe and was able to dodge in time. He does have these little bottom of the foot blades that he also uses as skates. It's pretty cool, but it's not as effective as you would want it to be. Meanwhile, Osaragi is so cold blooded that Shin, a mind reader, the second hand to Sakamoto, who's a young golden trainer, one of my favorite characters couldn't read her mind because there were no emotion. So when she kills, she doesn't even have a thought in the world of what's going on. Her trademark weapon, by the way, is an electric saw she can carry around with one hand, which she wields easily and is a fucking monster with this thing. But the highlight of this fight was how Yudo Suzuki used scaling and perspective 
these two are fighting on a diorama piece in the museum like a set up little museum kind of representing the, what they're trying to show off in this case it was like an old city suzuki drew this city as if it's the same size as mafuyu and osirai so they look like two giants brawling and destroying civilization the best panel in this fight is this left hook by osiragi she winds up her punch going through the windows and out the other end hitting mafuyu and sending him flying unfortunately i wanted this fight to be kind of close or not necessarily close but i wanted my for you to be show off a little bit of what he could do especially after his training with gaku but this was just not the right opponent i mean also like is just too much of a force because for the most part she's just beating his ass she's not even taking his attacks really seriously at all but she was able to try to help him escape and mafuyu's brother comes in clutch with his invisibility and saved him mind you this whole fight mafuyu had a bomb in him that if he died the big bomb would go boom Cinema has been a buzzword for a couple months now, and this fight is literally that. Kanagari versus Sakamoto. Kanagari is a movie director, except his movies are all about his killings. As much as he annoyed me from time to time, because he was constantly talking about movies and the way it took place, it just, I was getting a little annoyed with it. But he did have his moments where he came off cold as fuck. He even used a clapperboard to off somebody, that was pretty nice. But he's all about creating a movie scene, and a legendary one at that. And they, of course, are in a theater house doing this fight. So you know he's about to peak here. Sakamoto has these lead pipes that he broke off the little wall. And he's using them in the fight. And Kanagori was even using them to get around the theater house climbing upon him. But the reference and reenactment in a way of entrapment with the light fixture laser beams was clever. And I actually kind of wish there was more movie references with him as this would kind of be almost like a JoJo thing where there's always a music reference with a stand or a character name. But sometimes you gotta take what you get. Sakamoto beats his ass most of this fight. I'm gonna be honest with you, he wasn't really that close at all. One of the best panels of this manga though is when Kanaguri got knocked into the wall and broke a hole in it. As they're fighting, the background of the theater wall is them fighting hand to hand as if they're standing in front of a projector screen. He even threw in a Shawshank Redemption reference. I never even seen this movie, but I saw someone tweet it as a reference, but this poster does look saucy and I definitely see that that's exactly a reference to that. Now a lot took place after this fight with Akira, but I don't want to get into that too much in case someone hasn't read Sakamoto Days or really, uh, it's too much to really get into right now. That might be a video for another day. But for a little two chapter fight with Sakamoto and Kanaguri, and even though this is Kanaguri after he already kind of had another fight after before this, still top tier. Now this is probably the most popular fight or more so like a moment in Sakamoto days. Gaku versus Takamura. Now Slur and Gaku invade the JAA, the center of assassins. Now Slur and Gaku, I have high stocks for it. Like, because these two alone are just... I don't even know how to describe them, but they're badass, they're monsters, all the verbs, the nouns you want to give them, that is them. Gaku can literally punch motherfuckers' limbs off, almost like an explosion, and he's really nonchalant. Similar to Slur, but Gaku has the same facial expression every time. He went into the JAA and turned it into his own slaughterhouse. His trademark weapon is a squared mace. It's pretty badass, and with his superhuman strength, he carries it around like a broomstick. Then you have Takamura, one of my favorites, probably my top five. He's literally known and written as the old man who is very scary with a katana. Because he doesn't talk, he mutters, and he cuts damn near anything. Gaku even felt his presence down the hallway and knew something was coming. Not a person, but a thing. They clashed and Takamura unsheathed his sword and split the hallway. Impressive double spread right here. If I move these shoes and you a fool, if you cut the truth, then I'll be here too. He split the hallway, the office room, and whatever else was next to them in half, including Gaku's fingers, and cut his mace. Now, Gaku knew he was doing from here and ran. He interrupted the fight between Slur and Sakamoto, which, which we got a glimpse of what to expect, but we knew that's like an end game fight. There's no way the Suzuki's gonna give us all of that 50 chapters in. Now, Takamura, of course, doesn't open his door regularly or kick it down. This man calmly sliced through the door just enough to push the handle down and open the door. And just look at this fucking menace. Bullets do nothing. He did Uda dirty. I mean, when he tried to shoot him, it was raps after that. The precision of how Takamori uses the sword is raw as hell. He cut off Gaku's arm and almost took out Gaku and Sakamoto with this vertical slash. Even Slur, the main antagonist so far, who comes off kiddish at times and kind of lackadaisical, 
didn't want to fight Takamura at all. It took Uda becoming a S-word bomber and blowing up parts of the JAA building. This was Suzuki's best display of just chaos in his manga, from precision to outright destruction. I can't wait to see more stuff like this in the future. These are just some quick examples I saw and I was like, I have to put this in the video for Sakamoto days when it comes to fights because they're all different in their own way. Now, granted, were some of these the best ever? No, there's still like four or five that are unbelievable, and especially one around the 90s and the 100s that a lot of people are high on. So it's a must read for everybody. I know an anime announcement probably isn't going to come until next year, 2024. So when it happens, don't be surprised. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. I'll let y'all in the next one. Peace.